Hi again everyone. In this video I'm going to discuss a proof for a very basic form of the chain rule involving partial derivatives. So we have the following situation. Suppose w is a function of x and that variable x is a function of two things, r and s. So you can think of x as like an inter uh, intermediate um, variable. And in addition, suppose f and g, these functions, are differentiable. Then, if I wanted to calculate the following partial derivatives, dw dr and dw ds, where we've got curly d's to denote partial derivatives, then they are respectively the following products, df dx, where this is just the regular derivative of a function of one variable, times this derivative here, dg dr, and dw ds is the product of these derivatives. Now in many videos uh, I've shown you how to remember the chain rule and also how to apply it. So in this uh, video we're going to prove this um, form of the chain rule here. Okay, And along the way we'll get a little bit of a deeper understanding into what we mean by uh, differentiability um, of functions of one or two variables. Okay, so, so I'm just going to prove the, uh, the left-hand uh, chain rule here. Now essentially what we want to do is um, show that uh, this derivative in its limit form is equal to this product. So if we sort of combine these uh, functions We want to show that the difference of these functions of functions, if you like, divided by this delta r, essentially this, this um, quotient goes to or tends to the following product as delta r goes to zero. So, in other words, the limit of this as delta r goes to 0 equals this product. So how do we do it? Well, it relies um, on the differentiability of these functions. Now, what I'm going to do is incorporate the idea of differentiability into the proof so you get some understanding of what I mean when I talk about a differentiable function. Now, <clears throat> first notation. I'm going to define the following difference as delta x. Okay, and since g is a differentiable function, note, note that I've essentially just changed. Uh, uh, I've got a delta r in there, so I'm sort of changing, if you like, the first variable, and I'm leaving the second variable alone. Now, since g is differentiable, there is a function, which I'm going to denote by epsilon 1, such that the following holds. following difference is equal to partial derivative by this subscript I, I mean dg dr with the curly d's times delta r plus epsilon 1 times delta r where epsilon 1 approaches 0 as delta r approaches 0. Now, strictly speaking, um, the definition of differentiability for a function of two variables is slightly wider than this. Here I've only varied the first variable. Okay? I can also vary the second variable, and so you know, I'd have an s plus delta s in there, and I'd have two more terms. 
Okay, I would have a partial, a partial derivative with respect to s times the delta s and another term here involving, say, another function epsilon sub 2 times delta um, s and, and this would be satisfied for the corresponding epsilon sub 1 as uh, uh, delta s goes to 0. But it's not necessary. This is, this is okay for what we want to do here. Okay. All right. So the next step in the proof we're going to introduce the following notation, delta w. That's just going to be the following difference, where the delta x is defined up here. Okay. Now, in the assumption, we've assumed both g is differentiable and f. So, f has a similar characteristic. Now it's a differentiable function of one variable and as such there is a function, in this case I'm just going to call it epsilon sub 2, such that the following holds. Well this difference can be expressed in the following form. Now by the f prime here, I mean df dx, just the regular derivative for functions of one variable. And epsilon sub 2 goes to 0 as delta x approaches 0. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, essentially we want to somehow work with, work with this and show that the limit as delta r goes to zero is this product. Okay, well, let's consider, say, um, this delta w. Now, if you look very carefully, when you write out this uh, delta w, it's just this minus this, and if you replace your delta x in here with this, then and replace x with say g of r comma s, this is basically the top line here. Okay, but I'm just using the, the more of a compact notation. Okay, so Okay, so we can write this in terms of this. Now I'm going to factor out this, this common factor of delta x. And what I'm going to do then is I can replace this delta x with this difference here. And I know that that difference is equal to this because g is differentiable. Okay, so I can then... use my working above to come up with the following. Now I've also got a common factor of delta r here, so I'm going to factor that out as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just divide both sides by delta r. Okay, so actually this left hand side now is this. Okay, so now hopefully what you can see is that as delta r goes to zero, well, from the differen differentiability of g, epsilon 1's got to go to zero. So that term's going to disappear. What about, oh sorry, so the epsilon 1's going to disappear. What about this term? Well, you can see that say from uh, here that if delta r goes to zero this right hand side goes to zero so this has got to go to zero so basically delta x also has to go to zero and already know what happens 
to epsilon 2 as delta x goes to 0, epsilon sub 2 goes to 0. So this term also goes to 0. Okay, so this is just df dx with straight d's, and this is just dg dr, the partial derivative. Okay, so if we wanted to write it out just like we did in star, we end up with something like that. Okay, so we finished. Now, to prove this form of the chain rule, it's very similar. You just uh, vary the, the second variable and show that you know you have a delta s in there instead of a delta r, and you can use the ideas of um, differentiability to um, come up with a similar uh, style of proof as this one that I've just showed you.